right, so this is a new project vehicle you haven't seen yet. This is my 86 Mastercraft TriStar 220. Um, it's kind of a funny boat, sort of a one-of-a-kind. Uh, it's called a walk-around, so instead of having the driver's seat there and then like a center walkthrough, you walk around. Um, <clears throat> this one's a little strange because, or a little rare because it's got a 454 in it. Uh, high output. These also came with a 351 Windsor Ford engine, but this has got the um, 454 in it. So what we're doing today is polishing it. Um, this side is done. Uh, I have really struggled to learn how to do this, and I finally figured it out, and so I'm going to share how I did it. Um, I'll show you the other side, which is not done yet. <clears throat> you can see the oxidation that's formed, so kind of see it right there so real shiny over here and pretty dull and chalky over here try to get it clear here down the side you can see where I've stopped so right there is where I've stopped I've been working from the back to the front and so you can see how chalky that is and how polished that is um, this step here is just using a really heavy cutting compound and washing it good and then using a cutting compound, which I'll show in a second. But on the blue, I took an extra step. You can see it's really scuffed up and chalky, and that's because I actually wet sanded it. So I took a thousand grit and wet sanded it. Um, it's a little hard to see. I'll show you the back. You can see how bad the oxidation was um, before sanding. So here in the back, here you can see a spot that I kind of practiced on. So there's where I've practiced, and this is what pretty much that whole left side looked like. I mean that, you know, there's this deep royal blue from the factory and then it gets this oxidation which is just pitting and the sun eats away at the epoxy. And so I didn't know much about boats at all before I got this, but gel coat is actually an epoxy coating so you can see like where it's cracked here. Fortunately, I've got an old boat that's not in great shape. So you can see in that crack there, it's really thick. It's actually like, you know, a really thick and super hard epoxy um, so you can really hit it hard with sandpaper um, I don't know if it's normal for it to be this thick but so far I have really gone at it and not worn through anywhere and taken out some scratches so here's the process I am following like I said I wet sanded the blue here and here's a little chunk that I actually practice polishing you can see the shadow you can actually see the reflection already and that's without really wiping off the excess polish. Um, so <clears throat> this is polished really good there, and you can see the difference. So this over here has been wet sanded with a thousand grit sandpaper, which isn't too hard. Just get it wet, keep it wet, and sand it. And I, I sanded pretty aggressively. You can see there's still scratch marks all in there. And then when you buff it, I got a cheap buffer from Harbor Freight, nothing fancy. But the first couple times I did it, I did not use the right material. I used automotive um, automotive buffing compound or um, what's it called? Not cutting compound, um, rubbing compound. And it just didn't do the job at all. Um, but this is what you need. So this is um, what the pros use, one of the things that pros use. This is the heaviest cutting compound. It's their Perfected gel coat. They make an industrial Perfected heavy cutting compound. I don't know if there's a difference, but this works good, so I'm going with it. Um, it's liquid, goes on really easily, stays wet for a long time. And then <clears throat> the other thing I did that was different than what I'd done before is I got a good wool pad. Um, so if you get a rotary buffer, they've got a Velcro backing on them. Um, and I got initially I got a foam pad from Harbor Freight and it just didn't work. I'm not sure why. I don't quite understand all the science of it, but I think that the foam heats up and burns off the polish too fast, and so it gets dry, and then it just doesn't actually work the polish. The polish is effectively a liquid sandpaper. I mean, it's just a really fine grit sandpaper, so I think you just want to keep this moving, and you want to keep it moving fast. Essentially, the faster you move, it's like a stroke of sandpaper over top of it. So the more rotations you get on it, the more you're going to polish. Um, and then if you keep it wet, it's like having grit on your sandpaper. So 
I think those are the basics. Um, there's a little bit of a touch to it, but I can say using that material um, and a good pad, it isn't hard. Um, I fought it and fought it and fought it before getting the wool pad and the the um, cutting compound. But now that I have that, it's pretty easy. Um, it's not going to be perfect. I, I think there's still some oxidation there that I didn't get deep enough to get out. But um, my plan is to cut it really deep this season, get some wax on it to try to protect it. And then um, next season, I'm going to take all the decals off and all the pinstriping and, and really, really go at it, wet sand the whole thing again, um, and uh, polish it. And then, so that's the first step. So that gets to kind of the mirror shine. And you really, you know, even though it's that's essentially a 1,000 grit sandpaper or a little bit heavier, higher grit than that, it still gets to a mirror shine. So if you don't get to that mirror shine on the first step, there's no point moving on to the next step. It won't do anything for the shine at all. Um, if you if you can't see yourself in it, and you can see the buffer here uh, with it like this, there is no way anything you do on a future step is going to get there. Um, that's the key thing. Everything builds on itself. It's like a great lesson in life. If you don't do the first step right, it doesn't matter about the second step. Um, but once you do the second step, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm pretty happy with it. I think I think I will probably add a layer because. I don't think this is going to protect the way I want, but for my second step, I'm essentially using this two-step, or sorry, this single-step uh, cutting compound of wax. So this is just polishing a little bit further than what I'm already doing, and it's adding a layer of wax. Um, you can see they've got all kinds of different steps here. I think what I wish I had done is probably skipped this one done the two-step and then added a uh, regular wax at the end um, this is like a combo wax and polish and it just it doesn't really seem like it's polishing very well and it doesn't really seem like it's waxing very well which there's really no shocker there um, but it's good enough I mean it's uh, it rained last night and got some water on it and it beaded up really good and um, so I think it's going to protect it just fine and then I'm gonna I've got some old turtle wax that I think I'll probably just put some turtle wax on it before our trip here in a couple days so yeah so that's how you do it i'll uh show some more videos i'll try to get some videos of actually actually doing the the polishing with the buffer but um it's amazing how different this is i mean this boat has not this boat has never shined like this since i've owned it and it's sat out in the sun for um four seasons now you know a good portion of that time not covered and you can see it's not perfect you know you can see there's a little bit of haziness there where I just didn't hit it hit it really strong. Some of that might wipe off, but I don't think so. Most of that's just, yeah, that's a great example. There's oxidation there. See that pitting? So if I were to wet sand that, it would come out and it would look super smooth like the rest of this. So since this is the first time I'm doing it, I'm not, I'm not going to make it perfect, but I think each time I do it again, it'll get better and better. So that's it. That's how you wet sand and polish a boat.